looks like your credits went through just fine. Fantastic. Now, where was I? Hmm, right, right. You were asking about the Mercs. Noxolaris. Well, friend, you have come to the right man. Been their humble street pharmacist since just after they got together. Some of my best clients, by the way. But more importantly for you, they're the best there is at what they do. I mean, what a group. Leaders are bona fide Atlantean voyager. That's right, Atlantean. Then there's the spooky techno wizard cyborg genius. Finally, a mystic smithy giant. Twelve feet tall if he's an inch. Not to mention the mountain of a spirit bear he calls brother. Now, I can get word to him if you're looking to hire mister. No problem there. Just let old Blitz give you two tiny tips for your health. First, don't get on their bad side. Make sure you have payment ready to go, and don't try to pull any bullshit, or you're worse than dead. And second, don't piss off that fucking bear. Finally, finally, there you are. <laughs> the Nexus had just enough power to fuel one more try. The last step. The Megaverse knows my Atlantean people as heroes, but I, a shadow of chaos has taken root in me. They try to bind it. They try to bury it. But when I finally called out to it, to you, from across the void, you answered. I am ready. Welcome, traveler. To the Black Shore. Your shame reaches a mother's heart, even beyond the veil, little brother. My sister saw her mocked her as the darkness closed in. She giggled and synthesized honey sweet tones while leaning close to softly breathe her venom into my ear. And so, with judgment passed and tourniquets in place, my family commanded the automated surgical bots to neatly slice both arms and legs from my torso. The harsh lights overhead swam and dimmed before my eyes as flesh and bone were replaced with cold, unfeeling metal to cripple my connection to the arcane. No, my family lies far behind my path. And I follow a new teacher as she whispers from the darkness ahead. Her voice haunts me with promises of forbidden knowledge and wondrous precious beyond compare. Each step brings me closer to my prize, closer to my revenge, closer to her. stars as keenly as your ancient ones do. It is almost here. E is almost home. And with him 
comes the end for our proud and noble Vana Country Month, along with the rest of the souls on this world. As his foul shadow falls upon us all, we alone stand for those who cannot. <sighs> so rise, son of Aku. Our ancestors smile upon us this night as they call us home. Come and let us earn our place amongst the stars above. Okay, guys, we are live with this week's session of Prism of Ketterfall, a Rift's campaign uh, set in a homebrew uh, backdrop of our own making. Um, as we join the group this week, uh, we find that they have just exited a very dangerous situation in an arcane forge located in the wandering aristocrat um do a quick visual here uh within the forge they faced what appeared to be some kind of demonic incursion or rift and um they were able to slam shut the rift and exit uh, pretty much unscathed. Um, as they rounded the top of the stairs and exited uh, the building, um, they brought the survivors out with them. Uh, we had... We had both Ahab... and Lars survived the fray. Um, both seem to be recovering. Lars has uh, basically come back to his senses and is starting to kind of pull himself together. Um, Ahab, while still unconscious, does seem to be breathing relatively steadily and seems to be in in fair condition if not maybe metaphysically exhausted um as uh one of the shop tenders had come out um they had witnessed the scene and sounded the alarm um and very quickly a familiar character the witch hound had appeared to investigate the disturbance um, as a protector of the aristocrat, um, a, a kind of marshal or sheriff um, of sorts. Um, as he arrived, he saw our player characters once again involved in tumult uh, under, his, uh, under his roof, as it were. And obviously, by the shaking of his head, found this to be frustrating at the least. Um, with that, we pick up with the current scene. Um, let's go ahead and toss it to... 
let's toss it to a comma um our atlantean voyager um as you stand there you see that uh the witch hound as he raises his head again he actually steps forward towards you uh just to refresh everyone's memory this is happening basically right behind this storefront so out behind this area is kind of where all of this is transpiring kind of between some buildings and a sort of alleyway within this small facility of structures um okay so as he steps forward akama he actually looks directly to you and as he gazes around slowly you see that his form actually shifts and once again um he takes on his human appearance uh dressed simply in a in a kind of investigator's trench coat and um a uh top hat uh fedora um as he approaches like i said he's obviously looking to kind of engage directly with you um he looks at you kind of gruffly with a bit of a scowl on his face and he says atlantean tell me what has happened here uh, he has like a uh semi grim look on his face we were in the basement they were doing a ceremony something transpired a being came out of a portal and we just try to get everybody out unfortunately we were unable to get in as soon as we could because they had restricted us from access okay and he looks at you and just kind of raises an eyebrow and uh and then he makes a kind of rolling gesture with his hand like go on The uh, enemy escaped, but uh, this is what we came back with. Okay. As you finish this statement, he kind of looks um, skeptically between your group, um, pausing slowly uh, between Ren and Ymir. Um, what, what? Just roughly, what do each one of you want to do in response to his gaze? I mean, does he... Do, would you like for him to get the impression that you're agreeing with Akama's take on what happened? Yeah, do you want to I'll just look much... stoically at him and not really do anything? What, how would no. you like to... Um, Pretty much just kind of just... Looking at him, just kind of like exactly what he had said, just kind of just not along. Okay. And you, do you have your face played on right now? Or do you? No, no, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't have that on in unless I'm typically like doing stuff that requires it. Okay. Or... Yeah. Like in combat or like, yeah, using things. So, okay. All right. I am unmasked. And Ymir, what about you? Ymir meets his gaze kind of icily, but slowly nods his head, slow, like agreeing with him, agreeing with um, Akama. Okay. As he sees you do this, you notice that uh, his demeanor seems to relax slightly. And um, he then looks down. He then looks down at the injured individuals and right away um, turns his back towards your group and takes several wide paces um, to distance himself by a, a good little margin quickly. Um, you hear him begin to speak into what appears to be just his watch, um, but you would guess that it's his main, you know, communicator. And um, the, his he's kind of obfuscating the tone of his voice on purpose so that you guys aren't really privy to what what he's relaying um but you don't hear you don't hear a lot of um 
you don't really hear aggression and stuff in his voice. He doesn't really seem uh-huh. panicked or anything like that. Um, he uh-huh. quickly spins back around and uh, looks at your group and um, after just communicating for a few seconds with what you assume is base, um, he actually steps forward and stops questioning you and kneels down over Ahab. Um, he appears to take a small, uh, almost like, uh, you know, like a fanny pack out, a messenger satchel out from under one uh, armpit beneath his trench coat and opens it up and takes out a few small, what you would guess to be medical devices. It looks like some kind of automatic syringe gun and different things. Um, as well as a couple of uh, sensory devices and very quickly places a couple of uh, small attachments onto Ahab's forehead um, and seems to uh, pull out a little sensor, a small rectangular device, um, some kind of actual like, uh, you know, like an actual uh, uh, processor that's actually interpreting the signals that are being picked up from the body of Ahab as he scans over the situation very quickly you see that um he seems to to relax a bit more as it seems like everything about ahab's vitals is is pretty much green across the board um at this point a few seconds have gone by is there anything anybody's wanting to say or do Okay. I would, uh, no. Yeah, I would. I would say Renz is kind of still kind of just blown away by what just all happened, and it's just kind of just being pretty quiet. And uh, I think I was meditating before, wasn't I? Before mm-hmm. we ended last session. Yeah, you sat down to meditate at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, I I'm. I'm just gonna continue to meditate then. Okay, so you just kind of sit back down and and just start getting yourself centered once again. Um, you feel the flow of, of uh, you know, PPE start slowly resetting within your core. Um, as this is happening, you guys hear a few more kind of um, almost like alarm tones going off that, uh, that appear to be getting a little closer. Um, but they don't sound like anything major. It almost sounds like somebody running with like an air horn that's just sounding at every, you know, 100 feet or something approaching. Um, very quickly, um, a couple of just plain clothes individuals that seem to be wearing black suits appear, and they uh, each are wearing uh, really dark Ray-Ban-like uh, sunglasses. Um, they have really professionally kept, um, uh, you know, attributes. Everybody's very clean-shaven and, and manicured and taken care of. And uh, they each seem to be wearing a single silver ring with some kind of monogram on it that you've never seen before. Now, as they approach, um, you notice that neither one of them look armed. They each are around six feet and look to weigh around 200 pounds or so, um, fairly fit. Um, They come into the situation and very quickly they just kind of stand by and seem to just motionlessly be observing what is happening um they take a position each one of them is off to the sides of your group maybe maybe 10 feet and they seem to be just kind of scanning around and and observing what is going on without taking any action whatsoever uh both have their arms folded in front of them in a very casual and relaxed kind of manner. Um, At this point, the witch hound stands up. Uh, He looks over like kind of like, yeah, like, like those type of suits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very, just very professional looking, Uh, but, but still denoting like security or secret service kind of agents. There's something about intimidation or they, they they look like they're just like businessmen. They look like actually like, FBI. They're serious. Yeah, like FBI. Ex- CIA, exactly. Whatever. Exactly. Like, prof- yeah, professionals. Now, as you guys are observing this, the witch hound stands up and goes over towards Lars. And as he looks down at Lars, Lars looks up at him and uh, uh, just kind of, kind of roughly grumbles. Uh, 
chief like that and just kind of puts his head down and kind of bows a little bit um as he does you see the witch hound uh just kind of give him a real sly wink and this little exchange between them you're not sure exactly what it implies but there's something there's something there um are you guys getting a little bit of feedback on my voice yes just a little echo give me two seconds here That's good, and... That's all off, hmm. Check one more thing. Okay, yeah, I don't... I don't think it's on my end, I think. Hmm. Take gaming headset, yeah, I think I'm good here. Okay. Uh, all right. So, so as this wink is exchanged and a familiar look is exchanged, um, you both now, or, or I'm sorry, all three of you now notice that when they are in close vicinity to each other and the witch hound's face is visible, he, you're you're seeing almost like a little bit of familial similarity mm -hmm. between their faces. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on picking up on this, when you see the witch hound reach down and extend an open hand to Lars and Lars accept it, um, you see the witch hound pull him up pretty briskly. And when he does, Lars kind of springs to his feet a little bit. And even though Lars is pretty tall, you can tell that the witch hound is a, a very strong individual for his for mm -hmm. his frame. As he does so, he very quickly re reaches out an arm and kind of embraces Lars as he kind of leaps, you know, kind of is flung up from the ground. And as he does that, he kind of wraps his arm around him, embraces him pretty tightly. Uh, and he just, uh, he whispers something that you bear, you're able to understand um in uh you know your your native tongue of russian uh that is just a, a term used for dear brother between family uh -huh. um, okay as they do so they they hold on to each other for just a moment and you see lars himself is is pretty shaken um and you can tell that he's letting himself kind of like let a little bit of it out because you guys all definitely witnessed this man like break down. He he oh, really yeah. fucking lost his shit. Now, as this is happening in front of you, um, you see that Ahab takes a deep kind of snoring breath while he's still unconscious. And as this snoring breath kind of gets to its climax, he takes a couple of like hitched kind of coughs and then lets out a really slow exhale as his eyes open very, very slowly. Um, as they do so, he's kind of staring straight up into the sky for a few moments, just kind of like looking around, not saying anything. But you can see his jaw starting to kind of work as he starts kind of coming back to his senses a little. And it looks like he's already, you know preemptively trying to get himself ready to say something you know what i mean um so as he's coming back to um i'll leave it open once again is anybody wanting to do anything at all just just want to give you an opportunity ymir well oh uh, I was about, ymir is gonna slowly start making his way after cocking his head and hearing the dear brother exchange from both the witch hound and Lars it's 
he also want he also wants to check on Lars and you know console him because he was obviously still out of it because when Ymir last talked to him not even his steely giant gaze of asking him what the hell was that or what happened not even that could bring Lars out of his shock so to see him now up and around he just wants to check on him and uh, get to the bottom of it or you know his curiosity is peaked after hearing the, that familial exchange so he starts to make his way over towards the two okay um, as you step over close, uh, you see that the witch hound very quickly looks up at you. Um, and as he does so, you see kind of a tear welling up in the corner of his eye. Um, mm-hmm. And as he looks up at you, he nods once very, very briskly uh, in just a just a very sincere form of salute towards you. Um, he releases his brother. Um, who kind of wobbles for a second, but puts an arm around uh, the, the, the witch hound and um, kind of Lars looks up at you as well and, and mimics the salute. Um, but yep. then very quickly his head kind of lolls forward a little bit, almost in exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Um, as this happens, uh, the witch doctor looks over at you, uh, at you all and he says... Um, he says, uh, we have had the reports of arcane incursion. It would be best for your group to leave soon. Uh, he says, what further business do you have within the aristocrat? When he says, he's saying all this, can I check to see what my drones are doing? And if they haven't spotted him yet, just call them back to me. Um, as you check the data feed, you do not get any indication of, of, uh, his presence yet. Um, so a blitz's presence. So, um, you do indeed recall them back to your position and within just a few moments, they, they arrive. Um, you do see though that Wotek is still out in front. Um, mm-hmm. and upon last observation, you see that he still seems to basically almost be like sleeping. So, okay. Yep. Um, and just for your guys' reference, we are now at. All told, we're going to say we are about an hour from when the rendezvous was supposed to happen, okay? Okay. And so only an hour has passed in yeah, the two-hour time frame. In, okay. in, I mean, even though kind of some shit was happening for a bit, there was more preamble right. and shit going on, but... Yep. Even with everything transpiring, we're still, you guys are kind of approaching an hour being left, I'll say. So maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes. He's still within an hour of his time to be showing up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, An an hour, we'll say maybe an hour, 15 minutes sounds about right. So, yeah, I'm thinking about 45 minutes. Okay. So if that's the case, then. Maybe I'll send my drones back, check them out real quick, and then send them back out. I was thinking that we had surpassed it by so, a little bit of time. So. Oh no, you guys are still good. Yeah, still then good. I don't want. Then then I'll call them back real quick. Just give them a quick look so like, look over, make sure like they're like, since the one you know was taken by the girl that was breathing out you know crazy uh, neon smoke and shit. Uh, I'll just kind of make sure they're doing good, and then I'll I'll just put them back on their sentry duty to look look for them again because I thought we were over time. So. Sounds good. That, that's okay absolutely um you go ahead and do that and they fly off on their appointed duties like dutiful little drones uh as we pick up you guys are noticing that it looks like the witch hound is starting to um kind of order the subordinates roaming around the area He's starting to kind of order people to start sealing off 
um, that rear building that's the entrance to the forge. Um, he's starting to get on his communications device on his wrist and call in more backup and start kind of ordering some different emergency services. And you hear him mentioning arcane cleanup crews and, you know, different things like that. Um, but you get the general sense that he's starting to shift into damage control mode and you get the distinct impression that he's almost starting to on purpose ignore you guys like suggesting get the fuck out of here does that mm -hmm. does that make sense you're yep. not sure if it's in a sense of he doesn't want to have to involve you in the legalities of what could come yep. right or if it's like yeah maybe trying to maybe trying to suggest that besides the authorities there's other forces that might might be at play yep. that you guys should just get the fuck going okay mm -hmm. that being said it's this is entirely you know i want to leave this to you guys as you're standing here now what does everybody want to start doing um everybody remaining is obviously starting to like i said go into damage control mode and you know now you guys kind of have to decide are you going to keep trying to engage with him do you want to move out away from this area what are you doing i'm gonna get up and uh point toward the store area and okay say, uh I'm going to head toward the stores to maybe get some winter gear, just in case. Okay. Um, as you move out into the kind of main street again, um, you remember that your best bet for modern kind of gear that would be what you're looking for in this case is definitely going to be in that section called the lanes. And that's the... Second the, tier? Uh, correct. Um, okay. And you know that you can get to a a through station within five minutes of walking. Actually, you guys are right next to one. You're right next to one. So I'm probably head, within I'm, two or three minutes, you could be right there. I'm going to head with uh, a comma because I'm going to try to look for um, like... Um, just some, some simple computer components to make some augments to some of the tech I have. Uh, I want to uh, make some adjustments to uh, my radio, to my mat, to my 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 face shield and stuff like that, and just to add a couple of things to make them a little bit more um, um, synchronized with each other, as opposed to having different devices all doing their own thing. Try to see if I can combine some of these pieces together to have a you got more it. uniform okay. usage. So I will, if he's going to the shopping little district area, I'll do that. Okay, and do you do you want to do you guys just want to start heading that way together? Do you want to talk to Ymir? How do how do you want to you want to just kind of explain what you're going to be doing, or do you want to just? Yeah, I I thought he was declaring he was going there, which is why I picked up on it and said I was going to go. So I thought it was kind of maybe out loud, but if not, yeah, I would definitely say I'm going to join him to go. Yeah, I, I, I would have I would I would have stated that out loud. I would have been like, this I, is what I'm going to go do. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you guys have all agreed it's time to go shopping. We'll say so. As you, yeah, 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 but you here wanted to, yeah, I wanted to give one final nod to Lars, like one final, you know, honorable nod to Lars. And as I slowly walk, as I follow the group, maybe they're a few steps ahead of me, you know, it, within the group, I'll stand next to the. Um, as I pass the witch hound, and I, and I'll just say, it was your quarry who attacked us. Okay, and at this, um, at this, you see that he is completely unfazed by this, and he simply gives you a very stoic, slow nod. Um, in complete acknowledgement. Um, okay. And you, you're you sure this is playing into why he's handling this situation like this. Uh-huh. Um, as you do so, you now also see Lars kind of look up at you uh, one more time, 
kind of weekly. You can still see some of the black, like, stained grease mm -hmm. up at his hairline from the sweat out. And yeah. uh, it just it just reminds you that this kind of frail little creature, he actually has <laughs> he's gone through getting Quite. probably alcohol poisoning <sighs> one night and then wake I... it up and then <laughs> trying to detox and yeah. and go through yeah. all this shit. So he's he's definitely been through the ringer. But he looks <laughs> up at you and uh, and he kind of hobbles towards you a little bit under his brother's support. And as he moves in closer, uh, he says, uh, he says, comrade, comrade, I promise you, you will have your time at the forge. He says, the agreement will be honored. He says, perhaps not immediately, but it will be honored. And with this, he kind of bows his head very respectfully towards you. Uh and Ymir will bow back and go and say, bow, nod his head slowly and say, your word is to be trusted, Lars. Thank you. And once again, I am sorry, but hopefully we can find some justice for Drago. And then oh. uh, he just walks. Okay, and, and at uh, this, he, he kind of grinds his teeth a little bit and nods, obviously showing some anger over what's uh, what's transpired. Even yeah. with whatever Drago was, you could tell Lars had at least some level of respect for him. He, mm -hmm. you know. No, he talked so. about how good he was a leader in the community and everything. Yeah. He, he understood He understood that uh, they haven't had that conversation yet, but he understood what kind of man Drago was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, all right, so you wanted to head on off now? Yes, yes. Okay. All with the group. Check it. Uh, Ymir, as he walks out, he just walks over to Wotek 2, slowly pats him on the head, like, sleep, sleep, and then follows the the group okay um as you approach him you see that uh um the the fungal growth in his ears doesn't seem as pronounced it's not it hasn't returned nearly to the levels it was at and he does seem to be resting pretty comfortably at your approach he kind of you know growls just lowly mm -hmm. in acknowledgement but he kind of stays like 80 percent asleep the whole time yep mm -hmm. and um you notice that there's several little children and stuff running around very intrigued by him and obviously finding him fascinating but nobody's approaching within you know 10 15 right. feet or so they're all yep. hiding behind benches yeah. and fucking corners and lamp posts and shit so yeah um so with that um you turn and you head with your companions you catch up within just a few steps and you guys arrive at the through station kiosk um as you will say that you just you know request uh transport to the lanes um you head through the portal gateway once again and very quickly arrive in the main hub of the lanes, um, all of those familiar, wonderful scents assail your nostrils once again, and the buzz of all of this different commerce about you uh, fills your ears and tickles and tantalizes the senses. So as you guys gaze around, you see every kind of modern amenity you could hope for. Um, what are we heading for first? I'll look uh, at the, uh, there's lots uh, of displays mapping out locations for different kinds of businesses and so forth in different districts here, so. I'm going to try to look for, like, a, not necessarily a sporting goods store, but, like, a store that is uh, mainly for, like, hiking or wilderness. Okay. 
a survivalist. Does Ymir recall any good spots that he saw last time that he was here that fits that description that Akama is looking for? Because that's exactly what he was eyeballing last time he was you, there as well. You actually did see a place that looked like it was probably one of the larger, um, what would be like a like a sports outfitter. Um, uh you know that's set up almost like a warehouse kind of situation which usually denotes you know huge huge inventory and and variety and probably discounted prices and so forth um there was also some smaller ones that looked more like more like mom and pop shops that are trying to keep up um Mm -hmm. And one of those in particular seemed like it was better, you know, a cut above the rest. Um, but those are the ones, those would be the two that stick out the most is the really, really large warehouse type. And then the, the best mom and pop one that you saw. Excellent. So um, after hitting this lane, Ymir being our goals are aligned with the comma right now uh he's just gonna nod to both of his brothers and say i am sorry for what you you had to go through back there brothers master ren i appreciate you looking out for my brother wotek while we do this brother akama let us go find us uh survival gear for the bit of creep the not my head mm-hmm. the bit of creep i can survive much more easily than But I just need a jacket made out of your dick skin, and I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) The rest of the party, the rest of our brothers, but I will still need gear as well. Oxygen. I can handle fire, but we will need starter as well. Meat. Uh... Now we go and meet back here at a, uh, within how long would you say he turns to both of his comrades? I mean, this is just me thinking in my head, like, how long do you think? It all depends on what we can find. Right. I mean, if they have what we have, what we need and how quick it is to find it. It's really what it boils down to. I look at Ymir and I say, do you happen to have a time on when you'll be going back to work? No. But my brother, Lars, gave me his word and that is good enough. Even if my project has to be honored at a later date. We must go. We have things to do. We must find a way to return here. So let us gear up, get my brother better, and let us away. So let's just shoot for like two hours. Does two hours sound good? Okay. Two hours. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so in an, so in an hour, the person... Well, uh, hour and, yeah, so... Yeah, we'll say, we'll say you guys have advanced now to where we're about an hour out from when the rendezvous is supposed to happen. Oh, okay. Does that, does that make sense? About 15 minutes have passed or so. Okay. So does that change anything for anybody? I just want to make sure. I'm yes, we're, we're, yeah, there's probably, he wouldn't have the discussion about time because he would be worried about Wotek and very aware of the time constraints. So he would probably just say like, 
let us meet let us gather supplies and let us meet back here shortly okay now do you guys i just want to make sure does everybody understand what they're each trying to go shop for like is there do you guys need to communicate about specifically anybody picking up anything for the group or you see what i'm saying like do you do we have are, an idea of what are, supplies we're getting yeah are you guys each just going out and being responsible for picking up your own your own uh you know whatever it is you're going to need all the way across the board or is it like i'm you know i'm going to be responsible for fucking food and this and you're going to be responsible I'm, for this and this i'm trying to lead a comma to whatever the the top end spot is for yeah, so winter gear and yeah mm -hmm. survival gear fire starter you know the survival supplies Ren's going for supplies for his equipment. Uh, Ymir, what are you doing? Uh, winterized coats, oxygen. So are you uh, coming with me to the same store? Yes, I'm that's trying. That's what I was, okay. okay, okay. Yes, okay. That, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I was recalling that's what cool. I had right. I had seen the last time I was here, because I did make a note of Ymir looking around at what the best survival gear places are. I'm trying to lead a comma to the best spot that I Perfect. remember. Perfect. So I'm sorry, I got, I got confused for a second there. I get you now. No. So yes. Ren, Ren takes off and is heading towards basically looking for technological gear that could yes. be used to integrate your different uh gear into like your headset and uh, i'm looking for gear or even just components even components that i could make you know could macgyver myself to make work you know okay so okay okay no worries at all um you start heading off down one street um that the local map is uh saying is kind of the home of kind of like radio shack row right it's just got all kinds of different shit that you can use to kind of modify and build and do whatever you need to do yeah, as exactly as well I'm as doing. as well as different high-tech items to purchase outright and then um you guys head off to you said the the mom and pop shop is the option you were going towards right ymir the or the major the the major one, the major the warehouse one. With, one. Okay. Yes, with clothing Perfect. for for beings of my size and yes. heavy duty heavy duty gear designed for heavy duty survival, whether you're normal height or my height or anywhere in rifts. Perfect. You know. All right. Um, you guys head to the to the major warehouse location. It winds up being um, a beautiful, beautiful uh showroom for all kinds of uh gear and equipment it's also complete with a nice kind of lobby area um where people can sit back relax look up different um uh you know schematics and different um you know just like it's basically a sales floor lobby where they're trying to kind of pre-pitch you different shit and get you interested but they take really good care of you there now you notice that this is a facility that's built for giant size individuals as well um and even though there isn't you know really seating accommodations and so forth inside the doors easily allow you within and the ceilings um, give you ample space to fully uh stand all the way upright um and feel comfortable um you also appreciate that the floors are uh, industrially reinforced uh, so mm -hmm. they don't sound like they're going to snap every time you're walking across them. Um, as you're okay. looking around, there's uh, pretty pretty decent levels of security in place, um, but you're seeing that there's several different sections uh, that look pretty interesting, um, including one in particular where it looks like there's a uh functional munitions lab that actually is behind um some six inch thick um uh mega damage safety glass um and uh, past that partition what you're seeing is the actual manufacture and fabrication of of munitions which is something that's a very very rare sight you yourself ymir have never actually seen this kind of um 
extremely advanced weapon making. You understand mm -hmm. the principles behind it, but for just a second, it gives you a little pause to be walking by something that's so... It's kind of like the ultimate ex uh, expression of an art form that you yourself do have a love for in its own mm -hmm. right. So um, walking by, you know, some of this gear is definitely impressive to you. Um, a comma, as you're looking around, you definitely get the impression that this place is going to have everything you guys could need um, from your travels. You've seen a lot of outfitters like this, and this is going to be the kind of caliber of gear that you're, you can actually put your faith in. Um, nice. When you're checking out some of the pricing on the peripheral items, you guys right away realize that um, you're going to be able to save quite a bit of money here. Uh, I'd like for you, as you guys get a little deeper into the showroom, um, you start looking around at some of the gear available. If you open your compendium, the I um, tab that's right after your journal, up at the very top there, if you open up your compendium, you guys have access to... Um, yes. All mm -hmm. kinds of different stuff. So what I would recommend under, like, gear... I would start looking around under gear and see what catches your eye and what looks interesting and and all of that kind of stuff. Um, also, of stuff. I would open up your your character sheet to the equipment section because I believe you all copied and pasted your starting equipment. Um, yes. I would look at your list of what you're actually carrying and start figuring out, okay, what do I really need? I do want to give you guys fair warning um, because it's been explained to your characters. This is going to be a very hostile environment and this is kind of your opportunity to prep accordingly. So don't waste it. Really, really think your way through what, what you might need. Okay. Um, and also keep in mind that you guys are going to, at least as the setup is now, you guys are going to have Wotech with you, which can be very advantageous when it comes to helping carry supplies mm -hmm. or, or move shit around or whatever. And the plan is also to have Ren's rail, uh, mm -hmm. you know, riding along as well. But you never know what's going to happen. So you could theoretically load the vehicles up. You could load Wotech up with stuff. You could do all these mm -hmm. different things, um, but you never really know when you might have to leave a vehicle behind or or where Wotech won't fit or what. So mm -hmm. all of this is going to be an important thing to be thinking about is what do we have to have, what would be nice to have, and where do we keep everything and what do we do if we have to switch up what's being carried? Because if you start picking up some pretty heavy gear, you know, it's Ymir can sling it on his shoulder, but that gets pretty impractical at a certain point. So, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, keep all that in mind, guys. And I want to give you just a little bit of time. You, uh, Akama and, and Ymir, you guys kind of look through your compendium a little and check shit out ren um as you start heading down this kind of uh uh this kind of tech row you're noticing that they've got just about everything that you're looking for when it comes to um different like detection equipment um there's really high tech healing and medical gear there's sensory equipment um you know, lighting, power generation. Um, although I will say pretty much everything here in the row is technology based and isn't, you're not really seeing um, mystical options for things here. Um, you would guess that that's probably mostly going to be available in the Berg and that instances of like high tech combined with mysticism like techno wizardry those would probably all be in the berg and probably not as 
prolific of a selection. Um, no, I'm I'm really just looking for real base electronic components to be able to upgrade just my tech, not even mix in with any bio. Uh, I mean, um, with a um, tech wizard stuff. Okay. Like I'm trying to see if maybe I can get a night vision option for my uh, for my uh, my uh, mask. Um, I'm trying to connect my um, uh, uh, our 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 communications our comm system to my headpiece so i can just have it on me at all times or make an earpiece for it if that's possible i'd like to make multiple possibly for akama and if i can persuade uh ymir to wear technology at all make one for him um just a couple of upgrades but just straight tech i'm not trying to make i'm not trying to mix any magic in with any of this stuff um you're able right away to find several different um just kind of like mid tech level night vision goggle options. Um, but you do find one uh, within just a few minutes of searching that is more like a holographic heads up display. And as you're looking at the unit, it's meant to be kind of worn on the side of the head and give you like a single ocular uh, kind of enhancement field. Um, as you're checking it out, though, you realize that you could very, very easily um, kind of convert it over to being integrated into your helmet itself. Um, and that this option is going to give you way better resolution and imaging than ah, the, the kind of go. mechanical versions. Um, okay. Now... One second here. I'd like to actually. Um, what you notice is that pricing for some of this tech is kind of mid to high. Um, just because you would guess that this is a little bit more of a niche here. It's not there. You know, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the tech level in this kind of general shopping district overall isn't necessarily like like groundbreaking um but there are instances where you can find some pretty decent you know pretty decent gear pretty advanced tech um those are kind of running for a bit of a a bit of a premium not not gouging kind of prices but definitely a little higher um Let's see. So, uh, yeah. So you do find, you do find that one setup, and we're gonna say that it's got. Let's see that highest end one. We're gonna say that it's got. Here we go. Um, yeah, we're just going to say that it's basically a visor style like this, not just a single field. It's a visor style like this, and you realize that you easily could basically just build this right into your, into your helmet. Um, probably would take you five or six hours, um, to get everything working perfectly the way you'd like it. Um but it has magnified vision um, that gives you clear vision out to half a mile. It has thermal vision and night vision. Um, nothing into like spectrography or anything though where it's able to pick up anything supernatural or the invisible or anything crazy like that um that's fine the, I mean, I, that that will be spells that i can uh, uh, apply to this later now i do want to say the stats for the thermal vision are it's very short range and that's one thing that's a little bit disappointing about the the feature is that it's just it's this isn't exactly like the highest end kind of model but but anyway, I'm, 
Apparently um, at the highest end client, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, so it's got thermal magnification. Oh, and it's got uh uh macro vision. So it's got micro and macro and thermal and night vision. Uh okay. That unit is gonna run twenty thousand. Yeah. Um which is a bit steep, especially when you're thinking about the fact you're basically going to break it up into pieces. <laughs> but at least it's going to give you what you need. Uh, then what else are you looking for? You said... I'm um, looking for components to be able to adapt and adjust uh, our com our current uh, comms devices into... Uh, mine would be just implanted, like ins inserted into my helmet. Um, which I might be able to do that with most of the stuff I have already, but just maybe some components, wires, other little things that I would need fasteners, and then possibly to make an earpiece for a comma, and even maybe a larger setting to it, so I could have just a quick, easy access instead of us you know, having to pull out these devices, just have a quick, easy, simple device resting on the other two's ears, possibly. Oh, okay. um, so we're not we're not we're not pulling out a device every time we need to talk to each other. Um, and then also um, any type of wiring I would need to be able to uh, construct any other components I would need to construct uh, besides the jewels to be able to start fashioning maybe a couple of PPE batteries if I don't have those materials already. PPE batteries, okay. Um, I think I had sh given you guys the image of... Your your uh, walkie talkies, right? Had I shared that with you? I think at one point. Let me see here. Um, let me see images. Let me look. I want to say that would be under and the PC gear group comms. Yes. Them. Yeah. It's down under gear in the... Um, okay, there we go. Thank you. Journal section. Okay, so... So, I'm going to say that the cord over on the right is an attached earpiece that can be put in and then you can clip the unit, like, into your, you know, onto your shirt or your chest or your shoulder or whatever. Um, if you'd like you basically could take this apart and it seems to you for about 5,000 credits, you'd be able to buy the raw materials in kind of brackets and housing uh, molded. In fact, you realize you'd probably just go through a, uh, a quick 3D printing station and just form up the molds of what you're going to need. But essentially... For about 5k, you could take this unit apart, um, integrate the antenna and the guts into your helmet, you know, internally and externally without really compromising the protection or anything like that. And essentially, boom, it's now just part of your helmet. Um, okay. And... I'm gonna say... Oh, so... Um, uh, I just DM'd you, by the way. Uh, you're talking to Red, so I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. You're good. Um, and you had said, Ren, that you wanted, you were worried about, or you, you were trying to get something going on with the earpiece for for a comma, Basically. right? I mean, pretty much like a Bluetooth earpiece, basically. It would be like, so instead of them having to pull out the radio, they can just activate it right there, hands, you know, pretty much hands-free and just have it there, okay so. um yeah you would say that for about a grand you're going to be able to get everything you would need to do exactly what you're talking about and still have a solid fairly strong signal now if the two if if the radio is separated by the earpiece by like 20 feet or so it's gonna right away start losing 
Sure. Uh, yeah. Ideally, you know, it'd be the radio would be on the person, and it's just you know just exactly pull it out every time. Yeah. But the earpiece will be solid and and well constructed, and it's something that's where mo- the majority of the money is going in for materials. Is you're just going to get a Bluetooth one and then modify the radio to do that okay. uh, function. Um, and then what about other basic? Which actually, for- I mean, okay. I'm going to say this is an event like. I'm going to say these radios already would have that ability. So we'll just say that it's just going to be a thousand to get a really decent um, earpiece that is actually mega damage. You realize that if you get an SDC one, anytime he takes any kind of impact, it's. I to replace it. It's, yeah, I mean, it's literally going to fucking like shatter in his ear kind of thing. So. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, we'll say it's a thousand for just a decent little mega damage ear piece and he will be all set. And then just for some components to, uh, to add to some of the couple of jewels I have to, to produce a couple of PPE batteries. Um, I mean, the construction, the way it describes is pretty, it doesn't seem very complex. Um, I mean, I basically wanted to have the, the crystal encased in some type of a small housing, not much larger than larger than the thing itself, and then have um, a connection point or a way to. I mean, I was just thinking of getting like several different like types of like small components or con- like um, containers that would fit multiple different things depending on what I was working on. So if it needed to fit in a handle of something. Or if it needed to fit on to like, you know, if I was going to make it maybe a necklace out of something, just small little simple like containers that I could store these little uh, devices. And then also the any of the wiring or anything like that, that I would need to accompany it. Accompany it. I don't have the actual devices I would put it in, but just kind of like, you know, if you went to like a, a electronic store and you had little encasings for different types of things to 